The last couple of days has been a bloodbath for crypto. Many has been left licking their wounds and those trading with high leverages were liquidated. It began with Elon Musk bashing Bitcoin and ended with a renewed crypto crackdown in China. Those came as bookends to a spate of other bad news in Cryptoland, including a stomach-churning market crash and anger over Bitcoin's role in facilitating a massive cyber attack on an East Coast oil pipeline. All of this saw Bitcoin limp into the weekend well below the $40,000 mark as the entire crypto industry licked its wounds. What to make of all this? Welcome to Savvy Finance, the place for everything finance and crypto. A big appreciation to all our viewers and subscribers. First, after six months of crypto markets heading to the moon, a price correction was overdue. Nothing. Even Bitcoin goes up forever. Also, market crashes rarely have just one cause. And that was the case this week when series of events, from Musk's antics to overleverage traders combined to wallop crypto prices. Here are five key takeaways from Bitcoin's latest week from hell. 1. Crypto is still prone to crashes. Since its inception, Bitcoin and the broader crypto market has been prone to wild run-ups in price followed by spectacular crashes. It happened in 2013, when Bitcoin first hit $1,000. It happened in early 2018 following the ICO frenzy of 2017 when the price dropped from $20,000 to $3,000. And it happened again this week. But each crash has been less severe than the previous one. To be sure, a 40% tumble, where Bitcoin now stands from its recent all-time high, is still ugly but it's not like the 80% or 90% drops that marked previous cycles. Volatility is part of the ride crypto kids, so get used to it. Two. Much of the mainstream media is still hostile to crypto. The mainstream press ignored Bitcoin for years, and when they did write about it, it was typically to ridicule the crypto community. It looked like those days had largely faded until this week, when some of the usual suspects re-emerged with knives out, including the prominent New York Times columnist Paul Krugman who declared Bitcoin to be worthless. The Wall Street Journal's star finance writer Greg Ipp, who likened crypto to fentanyl and the New Republic which screamed that Elon Musk's betrayal could finally expose the grift of cryptocurrency. Meanwhile, Reuters and other major media outlets blew it by misrepresenting the news out of China, reporting it as a new ban rather than a reiteration of an existing ban, sowing panic in an already jittery crypto market. 3. Bitcoin has a reputation problem. The Bitcoin ransomware payment to the cyber attackers who shut down the colonial pipeline provided even more fodder for those who view all of crypto as little more than a tool for criminals. Meanwhile, the chorus of critics who say Bitcoin is an environmental menace has grown louder. Both claims are exaggerated, but the fact that they get so much traction shows how crypto 12 years and still has a reputation problem. Part of this is born of ignorance and entrenched attitudes, but part of it is due to the rhetoric of the crypto community itself. Instead of offering thoughtful rebuttals, too many in crypto are inclined to engage in tribal tantrums against anyone who criticizes their pet projects. Four. Coinbase let everybody down. Amid the crypto crash, Coinbase, the industry's flagship company, suffered widespread outages that left customers fuming. How is this still happening? There's no excuse for these tech failings anymore, given how surges in trading volume are a regular part of the industry. And Coinbase and others have had ample time to prepare. The only conclusion by now is that this is a deliberate calculation wherein Coinbase has elected to tolerate outages rather than spend on extra infrastructure and servers to avoid them. This might save the company money in the short term, but it's hard to see how the longer-term damage to its reputation won't prove more costly. Binance went down amid the crash too, and Robinhood goes down almost every time Dogecoin is surging. 5. Crypto fundamentals are still sound. Let's end the rough week on a high note. Even as crypto prices are in the toilet, and the media is beating up on Bitcoin, there is plenty of room for optimism. Unlike the 2017 ICO boom that saw companies raise hundreds of millions through flimsy white paper promises, this year has been marked by a dazzling array of projects. From Finity to Uniswap, taking giant leaps forward, crypto is no longer an abstract bet on the future, but a growing reality all around us. The technology is real and more exciting than ever, and this week's horrors are only a temporary blip. No, crypto isn't dead. This is a severe crash though. If you bought at the top, it's okay. It might take a while to recover, but it will eventually recover. And then some. Do not sell for a loss. Crypto isn't dead. In fact, it's growing faster in just the last four months than any time in its history. Thanks for watching. 
Are there any other causes you believe was responsible for the recent crash? Let us hear your opinion in the comments. Till our next video, please stay savvy.